In this video, I'll be demonstrating taking a Revit model from Revit Structure 2016 into Risa Floor using elevated slabs. So just starting out with a sample model here, I have just columns in place, and I'm going to jump to level 2 here, look down on this model, and what we're going to do is apply a floor using the structural floor system here. So if I click on structural floor, I can then define my slab. Uh, just go ahead and use this rectangular shape and just define a slab around the perimeter. I can add openings, uh, whatever I need to there, but I'm just going to go ahead and just do a simple floor. And now I'll click on that floor, and by clicking on that floor, I can choose the type of floor I'm going to be using. So I'll choose the 6-inch concrete. Uh, going from there, I'll just click on that floor also to define the analytical part floor here. I'll see that this is now a one-way floor system, but I'm going to choose a two-way because that would be how I would define this with zero beams in my model. Um, so I'm going to save this model here so it's all set. Uh, before I actually do that, I also have one more thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to the Elevation tab. And the program, when we're moving over to Risa Floor, we need to tell the program that first this is a structural floor, which it is by default a structural floor. Uh, so I'm going to go to the Add-ins and turn on the parameters on here so we can see. That'll assume it's a Risa structural floor. And I'm also going to go ahead and do an elevated slab checkbox. So turning that elevated slab checkbox on tells the program that this is going to not we require beam supports uh, for this floor, just going to have the slab um, that is going to span across the columns. And that's what you do typically for a two-way slab. So we go back there to our level two, you'll see there's no beams, just columns. Uh, we push save one more time, and then I'm going to go to the add-ins page again, and I'm going to export this model over to Risa Floor. So doing that, I go to Risa Floor at the top. I'm going to let the program here use its defaults. It's going to try to launch the program for us, Risa Floor, automatically. Since I have both the programs installed, Risa Floor and Revit Structure on my own computer, I can do that. Um, I'm going to let the program here choose. It's going to just use the Project Base Point and Project North. If you're curious about any of these things, you can always look at the help file, too, to understand further. Um, the program is going to optimize the member sizes for me. Now, the biggest piece here is all of these are on by default. What is not on is that elevated slab checkbox. So I'm going to turn that on and I will let the programs put this into my default model files location. So I can go ahead and say OK and it runs through. It's going to verify all the locations of my file, of my columns and my slabs and it tells me here at the end of that it gives me a summation of 12 columns that went across 32 materials. Some of those are default materials and then this is my elevated slab. When I push OK it launches into a screen with Risa Floor, and now it's generating my Risa Floor file. So had I not had Risa Floor installed on my computer, I could just open Risa Floor independently on another computer and then import that. But since I have both, this is automatically done for me. The program launches, and we can see it just takes a couple of seconds here for it to go through, and then I now see in Risa Floor, I can see I have the full model brought in using the Risa Floor ES. I can go ahead and make any changes I want to the structure. I can draw in design strips. I can go ahead and size the columns. And then that allows me to then take it back to Revit Structure in order to for Revit Structure to update the columns. And the columns reinforcement will actually be brought in as well.